the survival guide to life. Nation, it's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe in your potential, and I want to see that thing that you've got inside you explode out into the world. Physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, consistently. Hey everyone, how's it going? We got a really special episode of Survival Guide to Life, and this week we have Evan Carmichael. Now, for me, I know you guys know um, the beginning of my journey, um, Evan, I don't know if I got a chance to tell you, but when I was sort of making this change and this started developing this path towards like self-development and wanting to achieve self-mastery, I was just typing up on the internet and I came across your shirt, but I didn't know it was your shirt at first. So I was like, entrepreneur, I liked all the little like adjectives. So I'm like, I'm getting this shirt. And then I saw your name on there. And then I was like, let me search up his name. And then after that, I think it was like a day and a half passed by and my sister's like, you need to go to sleep. Stop watching videos. <laughs> and then, um, it sort of really um, motivated me and kind of gave me hope. And what was really weird, really recently, someone had me do an aptitude test and I never filled one out, uh, like the Chon. And then I got um, the type, they said it's the most rare and it's INFJ. And then I, I, I just recently watched a video with you and uh, about this personality and these traits. So I was um, just first wondering, from a young age, did you notice this need of serving others f from young? Or did it come after sort of accomplishing something and been like, okay, I've done it, now I can, uh, copy it and reciprocate it well first off thanks for having me man it's, it's great to be here uh it's awesome how the worlds have kind of collided i guess um with with the t-shirt and the personality tests um to answer your question i think one i, I got to see it in my family so my mom you know is, is on the picture behind me uh that's me when i'm like eight or nine years old and my parents and they especially my mom would always say hey if you you have the responsibility to help that if you can, then you must. Um, and, and she led a life and, and still is leading a life of service, uh, just in a different way. And that was always inspiring to me. I didn't, it didn't, it wasn't articulated. It wasn't like you need to go out and start a business. She's not an entrepreneur. Um, my dad's not an entrepreneur either. It was more just seeing what they did. And then as I became interested in entrepreneurship, I recognized that, Entrepreneurship really is just about helping people, right? I mean, you're solving a problem, you're helping people, and you get paid to do that. And it all kind of started to click for me. Um, it's, it was definitely a longer path. It was nobody saying, hey, you're built to serve. Hey, here's how you start a business and help people and make money doing it. I, it was a, I can articulate a lot, a lot better now than I could you know, 20 years ago when I started off as an entrepreneur. Uh, but I think all of us want to serve. All of us want to feel like we're doing something that matters. All of us want to wake up and feel like today is going to mean something to somebody. That you're going to make something or help somebody in some way. We all want that. Um, if you feel like you're waking up today and you're not helping somebody, that's uh, if that happens every day, you wake up and you feel like nobody cares about you, today doesn't matter, that's how you slide into depression. Or if you wake up and felt like today I'm going to do something for somebody, it's going to be meaningful to somebody else. Um, that's the path to purpose and happiness. And so I'm trying to unlock as many people as I can before I go. And i um, excited to be with you, Amar, to make it happen today. So, so then with making it happen, Evan, um, how do you sort of draw the line between helping and helping too much and then like not putting in enough time for yourself and like sort of being too helpless. Yeah. Um, I talk about this a little bit in, in my book, uh, built to serve compassion fatigue is real, but I also, it's not what most people struggle with. Like imagine a world where we're all 
giving and caring so much for each other that we get burnt out from helping out. Like that'd be a pretty special world to be in, that we're all caring so much for each other that we're, we're burning out and caring. Like most of the things that we're burning out from are not uh, from over caring about other people. We might over care about their opinions of us, but we're not over serving or over caring about them. Um, so that's one. I think two is making sure that you like the actual process of what you're doing instead of just the result. And that's a really big distinction. We all love to help people. And you might love to see your shows doing well. You're like, hey, how many people did I impact? How many downloads did I get? How many comments did I get? How many people DM me afterwards? And you, you like the feeling that your show matters and it's touching somebody's life. And by the way, guys, if you like this show, let Amar know because it's a lot of work making this stuff happen, okay? Leave a comment, send him a DM, let him know that you like it. Uh, so you might like the results. But if you don't like the actual process of making the interviews, if you don't like doing an interview, then you're going to burn out because the results alone aren't enough. Successful people love the process. So I've done over 10,000 videos now on YouTube. Crazy. 10,000 videos. I'm an introvert, shy dude. I've done over 10,000 videos. It's been at least seven years since I haven't uploaded a video in a day. At least one video. Like We're uploading, I don't know how many a day, but at least seven years since we haven't missed a single day. And people ask me, why don't you, how do you not burn out? Because I love it. Like talking to you, this isn't work. We're making video here, right? This is going to be content that will go up on, on, I don't know how many different channels. But this is not work. I'm not looking at my calendar and saying, oh my gosh, okay, I got to go talk to Amar, right? No, like I'm pumped. I get to talk to Amar. Let's go. This, this isn't work for me. And yeah. so when you actually enjoy the process of it, then it allows you to be a lot more sustainable in it. Um, and that's why I encourage people to find so, um, Evan, my uh, next question was when uh, you get a remote. Uh, oh, you, you cut out. I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, uh, my camera cut out. <laughs> but um, it's when you want to serve and you're doing everything and you know you're staying true to yourself you're following your internal compass mm -hmm. and you know you're you're not like doing it for the wrong reasons or like trying to get name and fame but then say someone close to you you know does something or like in business or something like that and it sort of makes you lose faith in thinking that, oh, how could someone so close do something like that? And then you, you, you kind of like fall into like not wanting to serve. And how do you sort of like reignite that desire? So what's an example? Like what, what would somebody do? Um, okay. So for example, say you, and, say you and me were in a business together, right? And Don't then, rip me off, Amar. Don't <laughs> screw me over, man. <laughs> and then... Um, after that, uh, I introduce you to Henry, and then you and Henry start doing uh, business, and you're like, okay, just don't tell Amar, and we don't have to cut him in, and uh, it'll be more for us. Got it. Um, I usually split things into two categories. One, there's the people giving you advice who they love you and they're seeing their world, they're seeing you inside their world. So like your parents might not want you to be doing this. Your parents may not understand that you wanna have a show and what that could mean and they're living in a different world. They love you, probably, right? Like your parents probably love you. There's a good chance your parents love you. They're just having a different version of success than you do and they're trying to guide you towards that because they don't want to see you fail. But their world is totally different. When, when they were your age, they didn't have the opportunities that you have right now. So they're just more living out of fear. Oh, his camera's back. Look at that. It's happening. So some people love you, but they're not supporting you because they have a different version of success and they just don't want to see you fail. So understanding that is really key. Other people might 
do something behind your back, like your example with Henry, uh, or they might be leaving nasty comments on your video, or they're just doing something that is not that is not good. The answer is empathy. I believe that people are good. Uh, that's why I wrote Built to Serve. I've gone through an exercise where in Built to Serve, we ask people, what's your single most important core value? Like if you had to pick, Amar, your single most important core value, what would you say? That it's not enough to want something for yourself, but if you really love someone, meaning like your human brother, you should love for them what you love for yourself. Great. So like if we had to narrow it down to one word, maybe, maybe it's love, right? Or, uh, I've yes. done this with, with many, 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 many people, thousands of people, people who've read the book, have done it. I've never had anybody's core value come back as hate or scam or cheat or something negative, right? Never. We want to be good. We, we, we have aspirations to be good. My, my who is believe, your who, let's call it love. Um, you know, have you ever had, it, love is your highest standard. It's who you want to be. But have you ever been in situations where you didn't show love? Right? I mean, of course. Of course. Have you let somebody down? Have you done something negative? Have you, you know, poked somebody somehow and you, you showed the opposite of love? Of course. Because you're not perfect. Have I ever not believed in somebody? Of course. So we do things that, that are not in alignment with who we want to be because we're in pain. Chances are when you did not give somebody love, when it's somebody, you know, who you want to love, but you're lashing out on them or you're calling them an insult or you don't show up like you said you would or you just did something that you're not proud of. Why did you do that? You were probably in a lot of pain when that happened. So you couldn't tap into the love that you needed. So when we lash out on people, when we do things, when we, if, I'm, if I'm saying, how do I cut Amar out of this deal? Because me and Henry, let's just, shh, you know, that's not belief. That's not who I want to be. Why am I doing that? I'm in a lot of pain. And so that's my default. So you don't get hurt, right? So, so Amar doesn't get hurt in this situation. He's like, Evan must be in a lot of pain with this happening or this person yelling at me, some hater coming to your video and leaving a nasty comment. They're not a hater. They're a good person. They're just in a lot of pain. If the highlight of somebody's day is coming and leaving a negative comment on your video and they don't even know who you are, how is that speaking to the rest of their life? Right? Like if that's the best part of their day, how much pain must they be in? And, and it's not even to put, um, yourself above them or feel superior to them or like I'm, i've got a great life and they suck it's empathy it's more like wow i feel bad for this person that this is what they have to do now it doesn't mean that you still do business with me like maybe if i'm doing that consistently maybe you don't want that energy around you maybe you don't want to be in business with me anymore um but to remove the sting to remove the pain you're asking in terms of how do you stay motivated and stay on your purpose when something bad happens it's actually having empathy for the person who did the bad thing and remind yourself that they're in a lot of pain and you're on this mission. Like if you're on a mission to try to spread love, if you could just even feel that, I want to spread love. And here's a person who's in a lot of pain. I need love, right? And, and all the other people who are also scamming and cheating people, the thing that they're missing the most is love, love for themselves and love for other people, which allows you, if you can actually feel that, to then double down on the mission instead of retreating from it. The problem is you're so hurt by it that you just haven't turned on the empathy muscle yet. Um, and doing that makes a huge shift. No, when you said that, it um, really opened a bunch of doors in that when you look in this lens of empathy, it's actually coming back at you. So me looking at him in a harsh or in, a, in, in that manner, that lens is only going to be looked back at towards me. So it's important to have empathy, one, not for that reason, but like you said, I don't know what his state of mind was, or maybe I could have perceived it in a wrong way. And there's so many different factors. And the first thing is never to think ill of someone, rather always think good, right? 
even even sure. I mean, that's a great point. Maybe I didn't even think to cut you in on the deal. Like maybe I'm not trying to rip you off. Maybe that's just not how I was raised to cut somebody in on a deal. Right. Like maybe I didn't do something really nasty behind your back, but you thought it. we just have different upbringings and different cultures and different backgrounds. And I'm I'm trying to I just do what I think is right. Right. And you get pissed off. Right. So that could be just a different perspective for sure. Um, yes. If you if you assume that they are a good person, they're a good person. I don't I don't believe there are haters. Right. I don't like the word hater. I don't I don't like the word loser. I don't think there are bad people. I mean, there's a tiny, 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 tiny percentage of people who enjoy killing people. OK, great. Those may be bad people. They have like a, something wrong in their brain chemistry. But everybody else, they want to be good. You want to be good. You want to spread love. And yet there are days where you don't spread love. Because you're in pain, right? And I've just seen it enough that that's that's where if you can just teach yourself to go there by default to say, this person is doing bad things. It's not to say that what they did was right, but they're doing bad things. Why? Because they're in a lot of pain. Oh, okay. So now I can, it still doesn't mean you have to spend time with them. And maybe, maybe the result is you still leave that business relationship, right? It doesn't mean allow people to walk all over you, but it does mean to, to assess the situation. And if you can feel the empathy for them, know that they're struggling in a lot of pain. Now you get to choose how you want to respond. Do you respond by, showing more love and spending more time with them? Do you respond by saying, I don't want this in my life and cutting ties with them? You get, to, you get to respond in a way that's a lot more thoughtful than intentional than reactive and, and upset, right? And so just that little filter can make a big difference. So in, in, in that regards with like business and or, or like startups and like entrepreneurship, like with say not, not only friends but just in general how important would you say it is to have like something like a business prenup or something just like oh if amar gets hit by a bus this is what's going to happen or like you know if henry doesn't like to lose his interest or stuff like that and um this is a personal question uh and so i'll give you my personal response i hate it if i'm at all even worried about it I'm not doing business with you. Like if I am worried that Amar might rip me off or is not a good, you know, not, not like a good, healthy mindset yet, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not doing business with you. Okay. Um, I've, so, so, like in the so, past, in the past year, for example, and sorry to interrupt, but I think the story. No, 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 help. no, um, not at all. There's two people who I took and started businesses with and uh, one guy's doing YouTube consulting and I taught him everything that I know. He knows all of my tricks, right? Teaching him all the stuff behind the scenes and now has a service for other people. And he's, it's a half a million dollar business right now growing like inside of 16 months, this guy went from being a grocery store clerk earning minimum wage to starting this business where I'm his partner and having a half a million dollar business inside of six months, a uh, 16 months, sorry, not six months, 16 months. Um, Another guy who we have a similar idea. He is in a job that he didn't like. I helped him start his business and it's six months in, we just crossed a hundred thousand dollars. So we just crossed six figures inside of six months from zero. I don't have a written agreement with either of them. Yeah, okay. They could, they could walk away at any point. They could, um, cancel at any point. They could say, I, I don't know, this isn't, I don't like you anymore. And I just help them build, you know, a six figure business. Oh, that could happen. So I don't, I don't spend, I spend zero time thinking about it. Okay. No, cause the, the reason why I said that was, I, I was listening to someone and they said that it kind of threw me off a little bit. And then, um, I had like came up with this really cool idea of how to get like multiple people in a room with like a green screen and stuff. But I guess, um, like you said, you shouldn't right away, it goes back into your internal self. And then right away, you should be able to distinguish who and who you shouldn't be associating with or doing business with. And this is how I operate. I think more people would be more comfortable with what you're saying. No, but the thing is, I feel more 
comfortable with what you're saying because that's what the inside me is saying but then like the other side of me is like but you have to do what like people are saying like you know what i mean you gotta and live your life right and and does that mean will i ever get ripped off at some point sure i still spend zero time thinking about it like if jeremy the guy who i started the half million dollar business with left and said you know what evan i don't like you anymore i'm going to take all your strategies and i'm going to go apply them and, and you're not part of this business anymore. Okay. Next. It's like, I don't want to spend time with somebody who's going to do that. Now, Jeremy's amazing. <laughs> he's, not, he's not anywhere close to that. But like worst case, if that happened, great. Uh, moving on. Next. Um, AP Giannini is on the wall behind me. He's my favorite entrepreneur of all time. He started Bank of America. And you think, why would a banker be your favorite entrepreneur? He was the guy who bet on the little guy. He was the guy who he lent money to immigrants when nobody would lend money to immigrants. Um, he would do his deals off of a handshake. Can you imagine like a banker? I promise to pay you back. Okay. Uh, so based off a handshake and a look in their eye, he would, he would make his decision if he wanted to give money to this person or not. Um, and that's how I like to roll. Um, I don't even know how we got this whole thing happening. A lot hmm. of when I go and do shows and interviews with people, it's not even about how many followers they have or how big the show is or who else has been on the show. Um, it's just a vibe. The way that the person messaged me, the way that I saw them, um, and maybe the, maybe you've got a story of how this whole thing happened, but there was something about the vibe. Like, okay, I don't know. I like this guy, yeah. so let's do it. No, uh, it it was, uh, I posted, uh, I remember it was, uh, I posted a picture on Instagram uh, with the shirt and then you reposted it and then uh, we were in touch and then I asked, I was like, hey, you, um, you know, uh, you really inspired me. I'd love if you could have the show. You're like, um, try harder. And then you're like, get Mark on your show first. And then I, I, I talked to Mark and I, I, I'm glad you said that because uh, – just picking apart his head and like he, he he's a real uh market marketing guru and uh, uh it was interesting so i, I appreciate that that um now Wait, did you get mark into clubhouse too yeah my man yeah so i mean there, there's there's the um, i get hit up every day and not not to you know not for the purpose of bragging i get hit up every day and most people don't get the response that you did. So there's something in how you approached it. There's something in you showing up and then doing the one with Mark that I just liked and said, okay, let's go. Let's make this happen. Uh, uh, and that's how I make decisions. It's a vibe off of people. And most of the time I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong and you learn from it. Like I could have come on here and, and it could have been the worst thing ever. I don't know. Maybe the whole vibe of the show is to attack me for something. Okay, all right, let's go. <laughs> but um, the more that I've learned to trust my heart and less the brain, um, it's just always paid off for me. So then I feel like sometimes uh, you can sort of like, uh, I don't want to say it's like psychic, but it's like uh, that intuition mm -hmm. and sometimes you know we sort of negate it or we don't listen to it and we try to like be more sympathetic and it'll sort of bite us in the end and do you think it's like not anything negative but just teaching us a lesson and just making us sharper and stronger for the future yeah i mean especially for someone like you like if your core value is love you have to work with people who make you feel love who give love back that starting the business for you is not just about making money. Yes, we have to make money, but we need to, we need to be giving and showing love. That's really important. And some people would hear that and say, Amar, dude, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. What are you talking about? Love, dude, we're here to make money. This is a business. What's wrong with you? Right? Great. Like don't partner with that person because the brain could be saying, Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe she's right. Oh, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I do sound too crazy, right? No, don't work with that person. Somebody else will say, Oh my gosh, I love this. Yes, this is what we're doing. Those are the people that you want to be around. So 
So when you listen to your head to say, yes, okay, well, this person, maybe they've done it a million times. Maybe they've already had a lot of success. If the vibe is off, whether it's vibe or feeling or gut or whatever, learning to trust that, that intuition will, will help you make much better decisions um, going forward. No. When you, when you were a kid, was there something that you wanted to be like when I was younger, like, I don't know, I wanted to be a lawyer and then a firefighter. And I was just curious to, uh, if there was anything that, you know, you, you, you wanted to be. Um, yeah. And I'm just keeping it on the clock and then we got to go, but that's a fun last question. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to be a baseball player during the season and a police officer in the off season. That was my dream. I love Kelly Gruber from the Toronto Blue Jays, and I wanted to be a baseball player for the Blue Jays, and then in the off season be a police officer. That was my goal. One last question, or uh, super quick. Okay, uh, just uh, okay. any quote if you could end off on that quote. Believe. Thanks again, Evan. I appreciate <laughs> all your time. I love it, and dude, I love your hustle. I love the I love the love. I love the heart. I love the energy. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, cause I think it's really important. Thank you again. Have a great day and a great week. Much love, Amar. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Evan. See you. Physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, consistently.